many times I found my wallet without anything there. And you have kids that are in need of milk. Tapat na naglilingkod sa Diyos nang magkaroon ng limb girdle muscular dystrophy, a rare disease that has no cure. How will they experience God's blessings in the midst of their sufferings? Alamin yan dito lang sa The 700 Club Asia, hashtag TSCA Blessings in Sufferings. Susunod na! Welcome to another inspiring episode of the 700 Club Asia. Warm greetings from all of us here to all our viewers worldwide. May your day be blessed, whatever circumstances you are in right now. You know, when we talk about blessings, uh, our minds gravitate, Camila, towards images of opulence, sleek cars, lavish properties, and the trappings of affluence. We always equate blessings with the accumulation of worldly possessions and material wealth. Yes, kaya whenever we go through trials and difficulties, iniisip natin hindi tayo blessed. We must understand that blessings go beyond the tangible. The intangible blessings of God such as peace, hope, grace, mercy, and eternal life are treasures that truly enrich our lives. In today's episode of the 700 Club Asia, we will unravel the true essence of blessings people experience in the midst of their suffering. In our first story, Dean went through untold difficulties because of poverty. He dreamed to be a lawyer para yumaman, pero hindi nangyari. Paano niya matatagpuan ang blessing ni Lord in the midst of his difficult circumstances? Panoorin natin ang kanyang kwento. Dala ng kakaunting kita ng kanyang ama sa pagiging sideline worker at pastor sa Zamboanga. Hindi pinangarap ni Dean na sundan ang yapak ng ama. You know, when I was young, I had no plan to be a pastor. You know, I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to do something different, something that probably will get more money and uh, I'll be able to help my family. Namulat man sa hirap, ang pagkakaroon ng relasyon sa Diyos ang tanging kayamanang binitbit ni Dean hanggang sa paglaki. Nang tumungtong sa kolehiyo, nakatanggap siya ng alok na mag-aral sa isang Bible school. There is this desire to serve the Lord. I believe that God is saying, you know, it's okay, I will take care of you even, even you choose to be a pastor. Uh, because you choose me, I will take care of the rest. I take care of your financial and material uh, needs. Baon ang pananampalataya, tinanggap ni Dean ang panawagan na maging pastor. Edad 17 nang umpisahan niyang mangaral ng salita ng Diyos sa kanilang lugar. Di nagtagal, nakatapos siya sa Bible School at tumulong sa pagtaguyod ng mga simbahan sa Zamboanga, Cagayan de Oro, Davao at Cebu. Hanggang sa isang panawagan ang muli niyang natanggap, ang maipakilala rin si Jesus sa ibang bansa. Taong 2003, nang magmisyon si Dean sa South Africa, bagay na hindi naging madali sa simula. In Africa, they respect older pastors older leader and being young and Filipino and small and short, it, it was not like very attractive uh, to them in the area of leadership and, and culture. Ngunit sa tapang at kapangyarihang mula sa Diyos, unti-unti niyang napagtagumpayan ang hamon. Taong 2005, nakapag-asawa si Dean at nakatagpo ng katuwang sa misyong ibinigay ng Diyos sa South Africa. Bumuo sila ng pamilya at muling humarap sa mga problemang pinansyal. Many times, I found my wallet without anything there. It's just empty. And you have kids that are in need of milk. Sumagi na sa isip niya ang magbitiw at umuwi sa Pilipinas. Pero sa halip na panghinaan ng loob, pinatatag ni Dean ang pananampalataya. Doon pinadaloy ng Diyos ang suporta mula sa mga taong tumugon sa mga pangangailangan sa kanyang pamilya at ministry. We are very confident that when God is calling you, 
to go somewhere to do something you know he is also there to provide um, your needs Taong 2011, nang umpisahan ni Dean ang daily Bible studies at ang pagbubukas ng libreng Bible school sa South Africa. We got uh, a friend, he owned uh, schools, and so we decided we are going to talk to him and ask him if we could use his boardroom as our classroom. So he agreed, and so that is provided. And then we, ha- we didn't have a printer to print books and lessons. So... We told people about our need and there was a call that we received and he was a CEO of the biggest printing company in South Africa. We were so surprised but he said, uh, Pastor Dean, I'm going to donate you know, a big printer for you so that you can print books. And so, you know, God has provided. Sa pagtsatsaga at panalangin, lumago ang mga gawain hanggang sa maging pastor at leader na rin sa simbahan ang mga nakapagtapos sa Bible School. Sila ang mga naging katuwang ngayon ni Dean sa pagpapalaganap ng mensahe ng Diyos sa South Africa. Lalo pang nagbunga ang kanilang ministry. Ngayon ay mayroon na silang limang Bible Schools na naitayo sa magkakaibang lugar sa South Africa. Nabiyayaan pa sila ng mga sasakyan na magagamit para sa gawain ng Diyos. We have come to a point in our ministry that we just raise funds and we don't care much about how much because we know that somewhere out there, God will always use people. Sa nag-uumapaw na pagpapala, sumusuporta rin si Dean sa iba pang kapwa missionaries abroad upang mas mapalawak pa ang gawain ng Diyos. Just going out there and preaching the gospel of salvation, that is more powerful than the work of a lawyer, you know? And we thank the Lord that He enabled us to experience the blessedness of being His workers in the foreign land and uh, living by faith each and every day. Wow, God really provided for all His needs. You know, I'm reminded of this verse, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. Alam niyo po, in obedience to God, Dean dropped his dream of becoming a lawyer to get rich. He followed the Lord's leading, though they had to suffer even more financially. But because of his endurance, perseverance, and faithfulness in serving the Lord, blessings poured upon him and upon his ministry work. Dean and his entire family live in South Africa. They are on a mission to plant a church and establish a Bible school in Cape Town. They have expanded their work to the northern and southern parts of the country. Dean is grateful to God for using his testimony through our show, The 700 Club Asia, to bring hope to those who are despairing. We may not be able to escape the intense pressures of life, but we must remember that it is by suffering that we learn patience, endurance, trust, and hope in God. Moreover, our sufferings are only temporary, and after that comes blessings. Be encouraged by this word from the Apostle Peter. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to His eternal glory in Christ, will Himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. 1 Peter 5.10 Are you losing hope because of your difficult situation? God has a plan for your life. He wants to give you an abundant life, but you need to seek Him. You need to come to Him, surrender your situation, surrender your life under His Lordship. And if you want to do that right now, just follow us in the simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you, but I first choose to submit to you all my dreams, all my plans, all the things that I hope for and aspire for. I lay them down and I humble myself. I seek your face. I ask for your forgiveness. Lord, forgive me for all the things I have done. Forgive me for all the foolish plans that I 
that I plan to do in my life. But I want now your plan for me. I want to do what is your will in my life. So right this moment, I open my heart's door and I invite you, Jesus, to come into my life, to be my Lord, to be my Savior. And as I receive you in my life, total, complete, and full, I want to thank you that you went all the way to the cross, died for my sins, paid it in full, and now I get to reap the benefits of eternal life. Thank you for loving me to that extent. I pray this prayer from my heart. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Amen. Ngayong tinanggap niyo si Jesus sa inyong buhay, pagpapalain kayo ng Diyos sa harap ng mga pinagdaraanan niyong pagsubok. Ang sabi nga ni Jesus kay Apostle Pablo, ang pagpapala ko ay sapat sa lahat ng pangangailangan mo. Lalong nahahayag ang aking kapangyarihan kung ikaw ay mahina. Call us and share with us that important decision you just made. Our hotline number is 8737-0700. Pwede rin kayong magpadala ng inyong mga mensahe sa Facebook Messenger ng The 700 Club Asia. Pwede rin kayong makipag-chat sa amin. Ikwento niyo kung anong pagpapala ang tinanggap niyo sa Diyos sa gitna ng mga pagsubok ninyo sa buhay. Mag-log on lang sa aming website, cbnasia.org slash media center. Gamitin ang hashtag TSCA Blessings in Suffering. I-follow nyo rin kami sa iba pang mga social media platforms gaya ng Instagram at X na dating Twitter. Sobrang sakit. Pati po, ah, hindi ko na magalaw pati dito sa ano po. Minsan na. Sabi ko, gusto ko na namatay. Ganito ang nararanasan ni Tatay Marshall araw-araw, dulot ng matinding sakit na gout. Naubos ang sila ng lamat ng walang pambilin. Kami sandi siya makain ng uon. Kabilang si Tatay Marshall at Nanay Vilya sa 264 na residente ng barangay Matalipni, Malinaw, Albay, ang natulungan ng Operation Blessing. Ano na talaga ito ni Jesus na para pinabigyan kami ngayon ng gamot. Pag nakakain siya ng gamot, kakalakan siya. Sa lahat, may gamot akong ma-inom. Just like Marshall, there are many others living in remote areas who are in urgent need of medical assistance. Your support will help bring hope and healing to them. Partner with us and make a difference. Visit cbnasia.com slash give or scan the QR code on your screen to send a special gift. Together, we can achieve so much more. God bless you and thank you for your generosity. Sa kabila ng magandang trabaho sa Angola bilang isang accountant, pinili ni Lance na bumalik sa Pilipinas upang makapiling ang buong pamilya rito. Iyon ay matapos niyang makilala ang Panginoon sa New Zealand kung saan naman unang nagtrabaho ang kanyang asawa. Naging aktibo si Lance at ang kanyang asawa sa mga gawaing magdadala ng maraming buhay para kay Jesus. Ngunit sa gitna ng masigasig nilang paglilingkod sa Diyos dito sa Pilipinas, isang pangyayari ang bumasag sa normal nilang buhay. Nasa bahay ako noon, naliligo ako. Siyempre, pag magsasyampo tayo, tataas mo. So, ito kasi hindi ko na maitaas. So, kung magsasyampo ako, ilalapit ko na yung ulo ko. Actually, wala siyang sakit eh. Nahina lang talaga siya. Makalipas ang ilang buwan, unti-unti namang nanlambot ang kanyang mga hita. Base sa mga pagsusuri, mayroong limb girdle muscular dystrophy si Lance. Ang limb girdle muscular dystrophy ay isang pambihirang karamdaman na nagdudulot ng panghihina sa mga kalamnan ng mga braso at hita. Sa kasalukuyan, wala pang natutuklas ang gamot para sa kondisyong ito. Sa pagkakasakit na iyon ni Lance, maraming beses na nasubok ang samahan ng kanyang pamilya. Dumating din siya sa point na bigla siyang bumabagsak, bigla siyang nadadudulas, nadadapa, na kaming mag-ina lang, na 
Inisip namin lagi paano namin mabuhatin si Daddy. Laki-laki niyan tao. Dalaw kahit dalawa kami na baba, babae kami. So parang ang hira physically. Ang pinakamabigat kasi na challenge sa akin is yung makita yung mag-ina ko na ano, nahihirapan. Which is ako yung padre di pamilya. Ako yung dapat nagpapaluwag sa kanila. Mabot ako sa point up. Para ako may depression na tumitigil yung mundo ko. Ang hirap pa. Minsan naisip mo, bakit ako? Bakit kami? Bakit si dad pa? Lampas man sa kakayahan nilang unawain ang kalooban ng Diyos, patuloy silang nagtiwala sa Panginoon. Nagtatanong ka lang, Lord, bakit ganito? Bakit ganito yung sitwasyon namin? Eventually, lagi niya akong sinasagot na, anak, di ba, may plano ako. And kailangan masunod yung plano ko sa buhay niyo. And yun nga, nare-remind ng mister ko na, di ba pinagpipray natin yung will ni Lord? So, ito yung will ni Lord, kailangan tanggapin natin. So, simula noon, mas nabubuo yung tiwala namin sa Panginoon na talagang may plano siya. Hindi lang para sa kabutihan namin, kundi para doon sa kapurihan niya as Panginoon namin. Dahil hindi na maaaring makapasok pa sa opisina si Lance, nagkaroon siya ng work-from-home job. Ito ang nagtulak sa kanya na lumikha ng isang Facebook page na pinangalan ng Love God More in Disability. Ini-encourage ko yung mga may uh, disability na magtiwala kay Lord. Nakakatuwa na ako, nag-write lang ako eh. Sumbaga, so, sinabi lang sa akin ni Lord yan, no? obedience lang. And yun, By God's grace, marami rin nabibless. May mga nagme-message na may cancer, na ganito yung pinagdadaanan ko, but because of your testimony, uh, kumbaga na-fired up sila dun sa testimony ko, dun sa, sa vlog ko. Ginamit ng Diyos ang kahinaan ni Lance upang lalong maihayag ang kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. Naging bahagi sila ng God is Able Ministry na tumutulong sa iba pang may mga kapansanan na tuklasin ang magandang plano ng Diyos sa kanilang buhay. Mas nagkakaroon ako ng heart para sa, hindi lang para sa mga PWD, pero para din doon sa mga kapamilya ng PWD. So sabi ko, Lord, bigyan mo ako ng opportunity para mayus ko itong potential na to na, na heart na binigay mo rin naman sa akin na burden para may may share ko si Jesus sa buhay nila at sa safety makita nila yung purpose ni Lord sa mga pinagdadaanan nila katulad nga ng nangyayari sa akin hindi naman tayo pinababayaan ni Lord eh katulad nga ng sabi niya dun sa John 9 verse 3 this happens so that the power of God could be seen so touching. You know, I'm so blessed by Lance's life. He used the pain he went through to glorify God. And you know, not just people with disability, people with sicknesses, even cancers, are blessed and are inspired because of his story. He turned his pain actually into victory, Amen. into breakthrough. Lance's disability came at a time when he was actively doing God's calling in his life, yet he did not despair. He continued to depend upon God's grace. He held on to what God promised to the Apostle Paul, who prayed to God to remove the thorn in his flesh, an unnamed physical affliction. But God did not give him what he prayed for. The Apostle Paul wrote, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Yan ang naranasan ni Lance. Amen. When we depend upon God's grace in our sufferings, we glorify Him. Nakita natin how Lance glorified God with his disability. He created a Facebook page called Love God More in Disability. What about you? Is there something in your life that depresses you? Don't lose hope. Turn to God and experience His grace and faithfulness in all areas of your life. Follow me in this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, there are people who are watching right now going through different kinds of suffering, Lord. There are some people who just discovered 
that they have cancer and they have to go through chemotherapy while there are other people who are going through chemotherapy ngayon at hirap na hirap po sila. They feel all the negative effects, Lord. But Father, we pray, Lord God, that you will strengthen them. Uh, these people are going through chemotherapy, Lord. Will you give them the extra boost, the extra energy, Lord, to go through this and finish well, Lord God. Father, we also pray for those who are watching right now na may iba't ibang uh, sakit, Lord. May iba sa kanila, Lord. May mga pain sa joints. Uh, may arthritis. Some of them have gout in the name of Jesus. He is healing you right now. And then He is just restoring your 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 joints to be normal so that you will mawawala yung pain. There are also people who are watching right now uh, who are depressed uh, in their spirit. The Lord wants to lift you up. Just trust in Him. Focus your eyes on Him, not on your outward situation because God loves you and He wants to restore your joy and your peace and He's doing that right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There are also people who are watching right now with different respiratory diseases. Uh, some people nag asthma attack, yung iba nag, uh, may mga allergies, uh, yung iba hirap huminga. The Lord, He's just clearing your lungs, your, your airways. You will be able to breathe well thank you Lord Jesus the Lord is healing several of you watching now with different physical disabilities he's releasing his power upon your bodies and whatever it is you could not move you can you are able to move this very moment and because there's no known cure for limb girdle uh, muscular dystrophy it's obvious that the Lord <laughs> miracle is needed in that area so we just release by faith now in the name of jesus to all those suffering this very moment lord with that disease that disease is defeated that disease is conquered this very moment in the mighty name of jesus amen and amen Oh, mabait naman. Sige, sige. Type mo, cbnasia.com slash give. cbnasia.com slash give. Give. Yan. Okay pa. Oh, kaya mo na yan. Madali na yan. Sige. Tulungan niyo po. Ang dami po nito type eh. Tapos apat lang yung daliri ko. Tapos ang dami pang hihihing details. Iba na eh. Iba na. Iba na po. Icons na o. Oh. Opo, opo. Nagbago na yan. Hindi na o. Oh. Kaya ko lang po ito. O, oh, hindi. It's just care ito. Ako lang, ako lang po dito. Relax na lang po yan. <laughs> yan. Pagkatapos ko, kaya doon na rin ko lang po mag-donate, ha? <laughs> Ikaw nga po, lima daliri mo. Di ka nag-donate eh. Ano nga hindi? Kaka-donate ko lang o. Oh, sa cellphone. <laughs> Sobrang dali na pala. Ano pa hinihintay natin? Donate na! Bilang panlima sa labing isang magkakapatid, mapalad na si Danilo kung makatanggap ng pinaglumaang uniforme mula sa kanyang kuya. Gayunpaman, naging tampulan siya ng mga panunukso dahil sa lumang-luma ang kanyang suot. May isang tinatakba nila yung inong nila, yung parang pinakikita nila na hindi ka dapat tumapit sa amin dahil tulong yung suot. <laughs> Pakiramdam ko talaga, naapi ako. Pero hindi ko malamas. Yan po yung sitasyon ko. Upang makaiwas sa mga pangungutya, naging kublihan niya ang library ng eskwelahan. Doon, ibinubuhos niya ang bakanting oras sa pagpapalawak ng kaalaman kung kaya naging mahusay siya sa math subject at memorization. So yun na lang ang naging reproach ko to avoid bullying. Which helped me a lot, ha? Kasi yung assignment ko, nasa ko, nagigat sa, sa lecture, lahat-lahat po. Ngunit dumating ang trahedya sa pamilya nang mamatay ang panganay niyang kapatid dahil sa hazing. Bunsod noon ay nanganib siyang matigil sa pag-aaral. Yung willingness ko makagrabe, na-affect ko kasi mismo ang mother ko. Parang karo siyang kopya na mag-aaral pa kami ng college kasi baka mami ang mamatay din. Masalis ang parang. Tinugunan ng pangalawa sa magkakapatid ang edukasyon ni Danilo kaya nakapagpatuloy siya sa kolehiyo. Kalaunan ay nakapagtapos siya ng kursong civil engineering sa Maynila. Nagtrabaho siya bilang teacher sa unibersidad. Sa gitna ng malawak niyang pag-aaral, isang kasagutan naman ang kanyang sinaliksik. Ang naging stage ko ngayon, 
Sino ba talaga ako? Sino ba talaga ang Diyos? Sino ba talaga ang totoo sa religion when it comes to faith? Naging challenge sa akin yun. Upang patunayan ang kanyang galing, nahilig siya sa pakikipagdiskusyon tungkol sa pananampalataya kung saan nabuo ang yabang sa kanyang puso. Ngunit nagbago ang lahat ng iyon nang minsang makausap niya ang isang co-teacher. Ito, sabi ko, pagka medyo nagtatalo kami, parang relax na relax lang siya kahit ang nasabihin ko. Naging interested ko kaya yun ako, parang nasasagot niya, tapos relax lang siya, parang lagi akong talo eh. Magmula noon, nauhaw siya sa salita ng Diyos, sa pag-aaral ng Biblia na bago ang kanyang pananaw at natutong magpakababa sa harap ng Panginoon. Masyadong dedicated ako. Pag masyadong kang dedicated, nabilis pumasok na yung spirit. Tapos sa buhas yung spirit, nawala lang yung, yung uh, pride of life. Nabago ako eh. Lumago ang kanyang pananampalataya na naipasa niya rin sa kanyang naging pamilya. Bunga ng mga pangangailangang pinansyal, pansamantala niyang nilisan ang bansa upang magtrabaho sa Kuwait. Sa kabila ng pagiging malayo sa pamilya, ang Diyos ang kanyang naging pag-asa. Naging bahagi siya doon ng isang Bible study group kasama ang iba pang OFWs. Naitaguyod nga niya ang pamilya nang siya ay maging surveyor sa Kuwait. Panibagong pagpapala pa ang dumating nang mapromote siya bilang field engineer. Dahil sa ipinakitang husay, unti-unti siyang umangat sa trabaho bilang structural designer. Kabilang sa kanyang mga naidisenyo ang malalaking gusali at malls sa United Arab Emirates, pati na ang tulay sa Hong Kong. Tumanggap siya ng mga pagkilala tulad ng Most Commended Structural Engineer noong 2015 at OFW Takilang Bayani sa Civil Engineering Category noong 2016. Patuloy na namayagbag ang karera ni Danilo na naging tampok pa sa ilang international magazine. Sa laki ng natamasang mga pagpapala sa Panginoon, naiangat niya ang pamilya mula sa hirap at naging daluyan din ng biyaya sa iba. Jesus is everything in my life. Yan, siya ang lahat. Wala ka nang hanapin pa. Ngayon ay tumulak naman siya sa Dubai upang patuloy na linangin ang kakayahang ng galing lamang sa Panginoon. When you acknowledge that God is behind all what you have, all your talents, all your abilities, and you really humble yourself, God will show you that He is the one that lifts you up. Talagang iangat ka ng Panginoon. Amen. You know, when we show our, the talents that God has given us, He is really glorified. And we all experience trials and sufferings, but God uses those difficult circumstances in our lives to grow our faith in Him, help us see His goodness, and experience His love and comfort. Even in the most difficult situations that we may have to face, we can find joy because God will enable us to triumph over them. Our sufferings will end in joy. The Apostle Paul wrote, not only that, But we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Romans 5, 3-5. Thank you all for watching. We hope that all the stories we've featured on the show have inspired you and given you renewed hope. If you want to see more inspiring stories, partner with us. Call the numbers on your screen or scan the QR code. God bless you more and more. Bye-bye. Ngayong Martes. Biktima ng pambubuli. Binabatukan nila ako. Binubugbog nila ako. Ang word ko sa sarili ko, bumaba na rin. May iniindang sakit. Hanggang sa ako ay nanghina. Namatayan ng ama. Masakit siya kasi. Nawawala ng pag-asa. Nung nag-stop ako, mahirap siya tanggapin. Sino ang tutulong sa kanila at paano sila matutulungan? Tunghayan sa Help Help! Hurry! Tampok sa The 700 Club Asia. Martes, alas 12 ng gabi sa GMA.